Le Chatelier's principle. If you disturb a system at equilibrium, it will shift to undo the disturbance. Let's take a look at how this applies to a system at equilibrium. Number one, the system starts at equilibrium. The rates of the forward and reverse reaction are equal. That means all factors are now constant, such as temperature, pressure, volume, concentration. At this point, number two, a change or stress is made to this system at equilibrium. A change in concentration, or volume and pressure, or temperature, or we add a catalyst. Well, how is this going to affect the system that's at equilibrium? Number three, the system responds by shifting to reactant or product side to restore equilibrium. Le Chatelier translated, when you take away something from a system at equilibrium, the system shifts in such a way as to replace some of what you've taken away. When you add something to a system at equilibrium, the system shifts in such a way as to use up some of what you've added. We're now going to look at some stresses. A closed container of dinitrogen tetraoxide and nitrogen dioxide is at equilibrium. What happens if I add NO2 to the container? If the concentration of NO2 increases, how is the equilibrium going to be affected? In this case, the equilibrium is going to shift to the left to get rid of that extra NO2. The equilibrium is going to shift in the reverse direction to establish a new point of equilibrium. Let's look at this example. Nitrogen plus hydrogen in equilibrium with ammonia. If hydrogen is added to the system at equilibrium, the system must respond to counteract the added hydrogen. That means the system must consume the excess hydrogen. In which direction does hydrogen get consumed? In the forward direction. That means the extra hydrogen will combine with nitrogen to produce more ammonia. Hydrogen will then decrease and ammonia will increase. What happens if we add some product to this system at equilibrium? If we add product, the equilibrium shifts to the left to get rid of it. What happens if we remove product? In this case, the equilibrium shifts to the right to replace it. What happens if we add reactant? It means we shift to the right to get rid of it. What happens if we move reactant? We then shift to the left to replace it. What happens if we change the temperature in a system at equilibrium? Remember, temperature is the only thing that can actually change the equilibrium constant. Right now, however, we are going to see how the equilibrium shifts when we change temperature. In this example, nitrogen plus hydrogen yields ammonia and energy. The energy is released in the forward direction. That means that the forward direction is exo and the reverse direction is endo. High temperatures favor endothermic reactions. Therefore, if the temperature increases, the equilibrium is going to shift to the left in favor of the endothermic reaction. Low temperatures favor exothermic reactions, which means that if I decrease the temperature, the equilibrium is going to shift to the right, favoring the exothermic reaction. In order to solve problems involving a change in temperature, you must determine which direction is exothermic and which direction is endothermic. 
a closed container of ice and water is at equilibrium. And then the temperature is raised. What's going to happen? As temperature increases, the endothermic reaction is favored. Since the forward direction is endothermic and the reverse direction is exothermic, that means an increase in temperature is going to favor the forward reaction, which means the equilibrium is going to shift to the right. That makes sense because if you add heat to ice, isn't it going to melt? What that means is the concentration of water is going to increase, the concentration of ice is going to decrease. In whichever direction the equilibrium favors, that side increases and the other side decreases. Let's look at another example. We have a closed container of water and its vapor at equilibrium. What happens if the vapor is removed from the system? If the vapor is removed, the equilibrium shifts in a direction to replace that vapor. That means the equilibrium is going to shift to the right. Now what happens if the temperature is decreased? Remember, a decrease in temperature favors the exothermic reaction. In which direction is this equilibrium exothermic? The reverse direction is exothermic, meaning this equilibrium is going to shift to the left. This means that water is going to increase and the vapor is going to decrease. This also should make sense because if you decrease the temperature, a gas should change into a liquid. Le Chatelier's principle involving a change in pressure. An increase in pressure, by decreasing the volume, favors the formation of the smallest number of moles of gas. Conversely, a decrease in pressure, by increasing the volume, favors the formation of the largest number of moles of gas. Let's look at an example. In this example, A plus B in equilibrium with C, all of them are gases. Remember, a change in volume and pressure is only important for systems containing gases. So, if I increase the pressure, that means I go to the side with the smallest number of moles of gas. Which side has the smallest number of moles of gas? It's the right side, meaning that the forward reaction is favored. Now if I decrease pressure, I go to the side with the largest number of moles of gas. That means the equilibrium is going to shift to the left, favoring the reverse reaction. Let's look at this example. What happens to this system if the pressure is increased? An increase in pressure favors the smallest number of moles of gas. How many moles of gas are on the left side of the equilibrium? One. And how many moles are on the right side? Two. You're going to go to the side with the smallest number of moles of gas. The reverse reaction is favored. Since the reverse reaction is favored, reactants are going to increase and products are going to decrease. What happens when you add a catalyst to a system? Since catalysts increase the rate of both the forward and reverse reactions, neither the forward or reverse reactions is favored. That means a catalyst only allows you to reach equilibrium faster. Let's do a quick summary. What happens if I change the amount of products and reactants to a system at equilibrium? If I change the concentration, the equilibrium must shift. In the first example, what happens if I increase the amount of nitrogen? If I increase the amount of nitrogen, the equilibrium has to shift to get rid of it. In order to get rid of it, the equilibrium shifts to the right. That means ammonia increases and hydrogen decreases. 
a shift to the right is favoring the forward reaction. Let's look at this same equilibrium. What happens now if I enter the system and I decrease the hydrogen? In other words, I remove the hydrogen. If I remove the hydrogen, the equilibrium has to shift in a direction that replaces some of it. This equilibrium is going to shift to the left, which means ammonia is going to decrease and nitrogen is going to increase. What about if I change the temperature? Again, the equilibrium has to shift to compensate. If I increase the heat of a reaction, we have to first determine in which direction is it endo or exothermic. In this example, the forward direction is exo, the reverse direction is endo. An increase in heat favors the endothermic reaction. If I increase the temperature, the equilibrium is going to shift to the left, increasing my concentration of reactants. In this next example, let's look what happens when I decrease the pressure. Remember, a decrease in pressure favors the formation of the largest number of moles of gas. That means this equilibrium is going to shift to the left. In this example, there are four moles of gas on the left and only two moles of gas on the right. This equilibrium shifts to the left increasing the amount of nitrogen and hydrogen. What happens if I increase the pressure? When I increase the pressure, I go to the smallest number of moles of gas. This equilibrium has the smallest number of moles of gas on the product side in the forward direction producing only two moles of ammonia. This equilibrium shifts to the right, meaning that ammonia is going to increase and nitrogen and hydrogen are going to decrease.